The Bloodline Invader Series, Part 4, The Curtain Parts. It is important to remember everything is connected. No matter how displaced it may seem, no matter how unassociated it may appear, everything is connected. As we've looked out into the heavens, all of us have at one time. All of our ancestors have done the same thing and asked the same questions. Where does our species fit in? You know, every galaxy has its own species, and it appears that in the Milky Way, we are the dominant one, it appears. So you think you know. You think you know your religion. You think you know about what you are. You think you know about your salvation, your eternal life. Well, Jack, we know very little. Every religion is made up. It is a man-made religion. So could it really be just this simple, that the soul is from that eternal spark of creation, that force that is still reverberating the beyond places that we can't even see. Could it be just that simple that a new souls come from the spark of creation into the galaxies of where they are destined, and as they fulfill their time, they are returned back to the source of creation? Could it be that simple? Maybe. I do know this. I know that this, this one megalith, this structure has been the anchor to our species, and it holds the clues to our past. As I have told you in many videos, you have amnesia. You cannot remember your birth. You can't even remember our beginning. But Khufu figured it out. How many of you know who Khufu is? Well, if you don't, I suggest you ought to do a study. I don't know if this was part human, part God. Don't know. But I do know this. He figured it out. He is the one who is said to have built the pyramids. I don't quite believe that. Of course, then you have to take the fact that the pyramids are only, you know, built about 2500 B.C. No, I think it's much, much, much older than that. But Khufu figured it out. He figured out the basic language of God. Yes, language of God. It's not your Bible, not any of that nonsense. Listen, sacred scriptures are great. They're great for guidance. They're great for teaching us morality, but they are not it. Can you? I won't even get into that. You have to understand that in order to communicate with aliens or gods, you have to have a basic understanding of their language, how they see things, how they measure things, how they talk to us. And yes, they have talked to us, not through the interpretation of a man. You know, remember, folks, it's inspired. A man wrote it. He didn't become this freaking zombie, you know, like the Borg and just started doing autoimmune writing. No, it doesn't work that way. But what Khufu figured it out was this. He knew that the gods came from somewhere. He knew as well. And by the way, these people were a lot smarter than us. A lot smarter. In fact, we're dumbasses. You're a dumbass. I'm a dumbass. We're all dumbasses because we got our heads so far up our asses that we think we know everything. My God, I look at some of what you people write. <laughs> oh, you really can't be serious. I hope that most of those that write some of the stuff that you do, that you don't have kids. So let's talk about what Khufu did here. Now, we have all been taught that the pyramids were laid out in a certain way and that these were the burial chambers of the first pharaohs. Yes and no. It has a part of truth to it. We know as well that they were, in fact, laid out. They lay, lay out perfectly to Orion. And that was initially our first clue 
but we found out it was a red herring. So let's talk about the pyramids first. You know, for a minute, it's very interesting when you see, number one, how a mind, a human mind, could comprehend and see, could understand the sciences so far ahead of us. We're still pooping in our diapers at this point to where these people were. So look at it. It has four sides, which represent all four seasons. Each block of the pyramid represent one year. Each block weighed 2.5 tons, and there were 2.5 million blocks. Starting to figure it out. Now, if you look at the base, each base is by 365.25 cubits. That is exactly the orbit of the Earth. Now, I could go on just and on and on on just these peculiarities, but I'm not. I want you to remember that the stories that we have been told in our past don't add up anymore. How did our ancestors know that comets were harbingers of ill winds? Hmm? Is that just rumor? Is it just myth? No, I think there's something more here. And you cannot deny the fact that these pyramids are all over our planet. There is not a continent on planet Earth that does not have pyramids. We're finding them on the moon. We're finding them on Mars. We're finding them on Cirrus. They are everywhere. The question is, why? What does their purpose? What is the meaning of it? It is a clue. So what did Khufu knew? Why was he so focused in on Triangulum? What was it there? We didn't even know about this constellation until Hubble. How did he know? What was it about these galaxies? What was it about Andromeda? What was it about the Triangulum galaxy? What was it about the Triangulum constellation. Folks, they gave us clues. We have been so dumbed down. There is something much more nefarious here as to why our species has lost intelligence. We haven't gained it. We've lost intelligence. Listen, Khufu was so far ahead, he even built his own ship. He had two of them. They found him intact. These are his solar ships. That's what they were called. Show me a ship today that would be nearly 6,000 years old. Yeah. So what about the garden? I was raised in that. In Christianity, I was told that the garden story was where it all happened. This was where creation took place. This is where the foundation of Christianity begins to say. This is where we begin to understand about God. Well, the fact that it's a myth number one, but it does have a base in reality. There's great evidence from many, many other cultures that there is a place called in Eden, we call it. It was apparently the place of where the gods lived, and the humans that got to go there, they indeed found the place to be paradise. It was utopia. Everything was provided. The struggle was not there. They had all the resources. They lived amongst the gods. Yes, I said gods. Read your Bible. We've had clues throughout our history. As we become more aware and begin to dig deeper, we're finding that these clues are everywhere. Within all religions, there is the thought of the tree of life. The tree of life, which has been the sought after, it has formed itself into many different myths. It could be called the fountain of youth. It could be number of things, the regeneration of life, the immortal life. It has been what's driven us. And we find that this is in many, many different cultures, that many cultures, as they begin to see this, they begin to understand that the seed of God is a planet. Yes, God has a planet. Look at this, folks. Here's Khufu's solar ship, the firmaments, the sun boat, the Incas believed it, the sky villagers of the tree spirits. Folks, it's all connected, regardless of whether you want to accept it or not. The day you begin to understand your religion, by the way, let me just put this out there. 
God is not a Christian. God is not a Hebrew. God is not a Muslim. God is not a Hindu. Wake up, folks. The clues have been here. They have been here for us to see. We have not gained the understanding until very recently. Folks, these beings lived. And you may be shocked. They are us. The clues have been here. We have thought for the longest time that we knew that this was the tree of life. We have figured that out. What we could not figure out were what these. Actually, they represent constellations, stars, 29 of them. This is the symbol of God. Yes. Why is it with the triangle? What is it about that it forms to the very foundations of who we are? It's because within it, we have the duplicity of who we are. Yes, I know from religions, this is where we get heaven and hell. Heaven and hell is made up. It don't exist. Face it. Also, there's good evidence that God is blue. And he's not a Smurf, not a Papa Smurf. He is blue. Seems to be good, hard evidence. As I keep telling you, the clues are there. You need to see. Look at this. Your eyes are blind. You can see, but you're not comprehending. You're trying to understand, but you're blind. Your, your mind cannot receive what you're being taught, what you're being shown. Your bigotry of your religious beliefs are part of the problem. Yes, it's true. You become so confined. And these stories, these facts, are thousands of years older than the Bible. Have you ever noticed... Who's holding up the world here? I'm just saying. This is cruel, folks. We get this idea that this is a benevolent God. I don't think those babies down there, which represents human souls, aren't too happy. They're being crushed. But the powers to be, there is a knowledge, an ancient knowledge, that exists. It has been held by the elites and not even the rich. There is a difference between the elites of what you think. Elites do not mean merely because they have billions. No, they're the paupers. No, there is those who walk among us. Do you hear me on this? They are walking among us. They are not of us. They do not belong to us. They are alien to us. They are hostile to us. They are the ones who we will seek out. We will put an end to their time. But they have been holding from us a knowledge. We now are beginning to figure it out. Yes, there are some of us, many of us, who are awakening to this fact. We see throughout history the clues that have been left to our ancestors who looked at these monoliths, these megastructures, and had to marvel as to what were their meanings. As they began to peel back the sands of time and we began to see our history reeled more and more. Clues have been sent to us from the past. We've never figured it out. Our religious bigotries have allowed us to become blind to these clues. And yet we adapt other gods from other cultures and we claim these as our own, never really fully understanding what it was that they had. Didn't belong to you, never did. But we do have clues everywhere in the world. We know something is much more than the sacred and the holy books that we have, regardless of your religious beliefs. We know that there is a commonality amongst man. We know that their ancestors of the past were smarter than us. We know that the visitors came here. We have records of them. We call them God. They have been here. They are our creators. And yet, even in our most recent history, we cannot remember. Why is it that the human species is the species with amnesia? We cannot recall when there have been great celestial battles right in our own cities. We can't remember these. When we begin to see the system begin to deteriorate, that which we cannot understand, we still reject. How is it that our species can predict the future? There is an ability that we possessed. Yes, 
when they created us, God, they created us with the ability to have the same ability they do, to see into the future. As we now put our instruments into space, we begin to see things that we argue even amongst those who put them in there. They don't understand. And we come up with the simplest solutions. Do we find that crop circles are in fact a message from our gods? We see these things, and yet we try to deny them. We try to debunk them. We put up our instruments up there, and when they send us back the pictures, we still try to debunk them. We can't handle the truth. We never have been. We are a species with amnesia. We have been blind, but yet our past continually comes to haunt us, trying to tell us, sending signals. Why no written records? But you know what? Our ancestors were smarter than us. They were not these knuckle-dragging Neanderthals, cave dwellers. That is a myth. You need to understand that you have been lied to. There is a reason why we have been lied to. But why no written record? It's been throughout all of the earth, all of the peoples, the races. They all know. We know that what we have been taught is not correct. We now see and understand there is a new science. We understand that the galaxy itself, the universe, lives and dies. It has a cycle, as the earth does. And yet we're drawn back to the cradle of Orion, Triangulum, Andromeda. Why? Why the constellation of the tree of life? Why the constellation of the hand of God? Have you ever asked yourself these questions? I bet you have. Yet, they stare at us. They have stared at modern man since we have been repopulated. Yes, we know who the gods were. We can't understand if this is in fact us, because it very well may be, ladies and gentlemen, it may be us. We know this. They were here. They left us all what they had and understanding. We know as well that throughout our known history, this has been a fact. And then we get the disturbing fact of the Human Genome Project. We were told when I was growing up, there was only one species, Homo erectus. Now we know that there were nine Nine different species of humanids. Where? Who? Why? How? That's the questions you should be asking. These are the cave drawings from France. They were called Cro-Magna. They were smarter than us, more intelligent, and had a greater understanding. And in our ignorance, in our religious bigotry, in our biasness, we seem to think that they were merely animals. Ha! <laughs> God, they had to know and hope that we figured it out. Some of us have. We now know that these are not just mere drawings of animals. We know now that these are the drawings of the heavens, the cosmos. We now see and hear that these species... Cro-Magna, highly intelligent, much more intelligent than us. They understood the brain. They also understood where the gods lived. And how is it that this is, seems to you think that this is being merely painted on a wall? But you don't understand something again. You cannot see. This was drawn from the perspective of being above the earth. Figure that one out, cowboy. They are sin, they are us. And they are sending us a warning. They said to us, you're going to die. We died. You're going to die. Many of our species in the past have died. We've never lived longer than five or 10,000 years. And how many times has this been done before? By some estimates, 30,000 years times. 30,000 times has mankind 
been through this time and time and time again, and yet we always fail. Always. And it comes back to this. The DNA, folks. Our DNA. And when we see the manipulation by those greater than us, we should always ask why and who. Who is manipulating still to this day the DNA? Who is collecting the DNA? Because, folks, the collapse is coming. There is no survival for us. I hate to be the one to tell you that. There is not going to be no rapture. There's not going to be any spaceship coming down. The sad part of it is our species has been through this. And let me ask you this. When was the last time God was here? When's the last time a physical God was recorded? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Maybe they're here already. Did you ever think about that? Maybe they're looking in on us right now, on you. Yeah, you. They've been here, folks. They are our creators. They are our teachers. They are the ones who have always been here. They're the ones who seem to come back and are the cedars. That once that this version is wiped away, and it will be, as previous versions were, they will return, they will again teach us again, and hopefully, maybe, at some point in time, we will become like they are. It is as it's always been. Here is our species beginning. Meet our creators. So when you look out into the heavens tonight, remember all the ancestors that have looked up there prior to you. We've all asked the same questions. Did you know? It's the question that we ask all of ourselves. We try to figure out what is our meaning, what is our purpose, who made us, where is our end? Could it simply be, folks, that you were here to experience what you were here to experience, and you shall take those experiences back, and you shall add to the collective consciousness of all of our ancestors that have come and all those who are yet to come before us. God lives there. It's a fact. We know where he lives. He gave us all the symbols, and it's just not he. It's it. it doesn't have a masculine. doesn't have a feminine. It is. And there is one big kahuna, but there are many others behind them. I'd like to give credit to the Yellow Rose for Texas. Please visit her YouTube channel. Damon T. Barry Ryder, please visit his YouTube channel. Oneism.org, great concept to read. And of course, I'd like to give credit to DJ as well for the animation. All right, folks, I hope this has helped. There is still yet much more. It's much like peeling back the onion. We know this. We know that we are. We know that we have been, and it is our hope that we shall yet be. It is the hope that after you and I have spent our time on this earth, that our lives continue. The essence of our memories and experiences are never gone, but continue to define who and what we are individually and collectively. All right, my friends, great 2017. Make it the year for you to be kind to every person. Might be one of your most fantastic years.